How's it going, everyone? It's been a while. Sorry about that. I'm back in school, so I haven't had time to make these videos. However, I've got one for you today. I have been working on a Pokemon-like battle system, so I thought that I would share with you how I did that. Here we go. So this will be a little different. I'm not actually going to live code this because I already have it working. I'm just going to walk you through what I did. So here is my little game here. I've got these uh, placeholder monsters here. And what I did is I gave them a component called monster stats, which you can see over here on the right. Just some basic stuff like health, XP, level, and a little boolean that says if it's owned or not. Um, that came from the code over here, monster stats. It's just a little struct here. And this is the component right here. And my monster has monster stats. I also gave the main character a party. So a monster party is a map of monsters and monster stats. This is also an actor component, and I gave the main character this guy, because, well, you have a party of monsters, right? So you need to keep track of what's in your party. Here we can see the player character, monster party, and I gave it one monster file here, that's the, uh, the placeholder guy. And I gave it a health of 69, XP of 73, a level of 7, and I checked the owned boolean. Now, I also have this other map, so this is my little main overworld map, as you can see here, just a little little house, some trees, it's been fun to make this art style. But I have a separate level here, which this is the battle map, and a little camera here, you can see it looks down, kind of like the 3D Pokemon um, maps, or Temtem, or what have you, uh, where this will load in. I've got spawners here. So this will be the friendly monster, this will be the enemy monster, and the player starts here. Now the thing about loading into another level is you lose everything. All the information, it's gone. Uh, it's essentially a new game in some ways. But the game instance carries over. The game instance is the continuous uh, thing of the executable. So, we want to save information into the game instance so that we can load it back in for the new map. So what I've got is the monster, as you can see, has a trigger here, and the player character's got a trigger. So, I'm going to start with the monster. So when the trigger sphere overlaps with the player character, we're checking first if that's valid. We're going to trigger this interface message call on the game instance. We're passing in the monster stats, and we're passing in the class of the monster. If we go over to the game instance, we see that here. Save monster stats, it comes in. We're creating a save game object. This monster save is a save game I created. We're grabbing the return value of that. We're storing the monster reference, the class, and we're storing the monster stats in it. We're setting the monster save, which is over here on the left. We have the enemy monster save. And then we're saving that to, to a slot. I gave the enemy monster save a slot of 101 and named it enemy monster uh, save. So, before I move on over here, I will show you on the player character. We have another overlap. We're checking if it's a monster, if it's valid. And then we have a save monster party this time. It's a, also an interface call. Monster party is grabbed off of the component. We grab that map of references and stats and we pass it in. We come over here, here's the interface, this one, interface call. The monster party comes in. We're creating a save object, another one. This time it's a monster party save object. We're going to pass that into the return value and set that. Here we have the, uh, the save, we're setting it so we can store it. And we save that game to slot, player, monster party save, and user index 200. Now, before we load this map, I wanted to make sure that both of these um, saves properly. I wanted to make sure that both of these occur. So I've got a Boolean array here, ready to load. It's got two members, index 0 and 1. When the monster party save triggers, 
it sends in the return value, so success goes into index 0, ready to load, set array element. Same thing over here, when the en enemy monster save succe uh, succeeds, it goes into index 1. We come over to a do once, which starts a timer. This timer triggers this event load battle map, which is going to check to make sure that those booleans are equal. So we want to make sure that we are ready to load, that both of these have been set, and if so, we open the battle map level. If not, we come back up here and we set the timer again. When this open level triggers, we reopen the do once so that we can do this again for a future battle map load. Let's check out the game mode for the battle map. This is a specific game mode that will start as soon as we load in. First, we're going to grab the enemy monster save, user index 101. We're going to cast to it to a monster save file. We're going to take off of that monster save file the monster reference and the monster stats. So I've got to get all actors with tag because I've given the spawners um, names. So one has the tag enemy monster spawn. We're just going to go ahead and grab um, index zero because there's going to be only one. We're going to grab the actor location of that and pass it into a spawn actor, which is taking our monster reference. And then we're uh, taking the monster stats off of that spawned monster and we're setting its stats. Next, we're going to do the same thing, this time with the player monster party save, which is index 200. We're going to cast that to a monster party save. We're going to get the monster party out, and like Pokemon, you throw out the number one monster in your party, right? So we're going to grab the keys and the values and get indexes zero for both. Keys is going to be our reference to a monster, values is the stats. We're going to grab actors with tag, this time friendly monster spawn. We're going to get the first index, we're going to grab its location, we're going to spawn that, uh, that reference, that class of monster, pass in the spawn transform of that spawn location. We're going to grab the monster stats off of this spawned actor, and we're going to set the monster stats. So that's the enemy monster spawn and the friendly monster spawn utilizing a save file. So if we go ahead and load back up our neighborhood map, and I hit play, we're going to go over here and I'm going to show you the values first. Here's our player character. Come down here to monster party, and we can see the monster party here. The monster file that he has with the values. And I think we're going to walk into this guy, which I will click on so you can see its monster stats health 50 xp 0 levels 3 it is not owned so if i walk into it we load into the battle map successfully and if i scroll down here are the two monsters so monster file let's see the monster stats that's the enemy and look health is 50 xp 0 level is 3 it's not owned monster file 1 should be the player's monster and it is. As we can see here, there are the values. 69, 73, 7, and it's owned. So there you go. A real quick video on how to set up the, uh, the Pokemon battle map and how to successfully save and load over the monsters so that eventually you can hit some fight stuff and uh, then I'll make some logic of how to return to the previous and I'll make a new video for that. Hopefully this helped you out if you're into Pokemon and you wanted to use Unreal Engine to make something resembling a monster battle system. Uh, until next time, drink some coffee. <laughs>